Let's see what this trio can offer cooling wise, having in mind that they are very reasonably priced. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. I know it's winter time, but it's actually never too late or too early to do an upgrade on your CPU cooling. Plus, there's always somewhere on the planet a place that it's currently going through a hot season, as it is always 5 o'clock somewhere. Anyhow, what I have here is two sides cooler, the Fuma 2 and Mugen 5, the all-out RGB version of it, and this is basically a comparison in itself between these two, both are really massive all-present tower CPU coolers, but one of them is a dual tower one, that is the Fuma 2. The third one is an underdog coming from a brand that I've mentioned already a couple of times, or better to say review their products, chassis for the most part, Silentium PC and their Grandis 3 model. Being a Polish brand, they are not that present outside of Europe, which is a pity because they have very balanced products, as this one will again show you that. I'm also going to do a similar CPU comparison, but in a bit lower price bracket, as well as with CPU coolers that have a smaller footprint, so be sure to subscribe for that one. Fuma 2 weighs in at exactly 1 kilogram, what's interesting about it is that you'll get one slim and one normal 1200 RPM Kazeplex 120mm PWM fan, so you get a better clearance on the other side in case you use a 2066 socket, plus it's off-center to begin with, and it also has a cutout portion on one side for more room for the surrounding components. It carries a total of 6 6mm nickel-plated copper heat pipes, which lead you to the decently polished CPU contact base, and its two towers also have this cool overlapping fin design. We'll see later on how it impacts the performance. Mugen 5 is a bit lighter than its split brother, and because of that it has more compact dimensions, although it's still a beast of a cooler as you can see here, with a total of 5 5mm nickel-plated copper heat pipes, coming down to again a pretty nicely finished CPU contact base. It also comes with two Kazeplex 120mm fans, but obviously those being the RGB versions, and them together with the top cover plate make quite of a light show. This makes quite a mess in regards to cable management as you have a lot of 5V ARGB headers to connect, and although you can daisy chain them, it's still a lot of cables that need to be tucked away. Silentium PC's Grandis 3 doesn't have that problem as it uses your plain and regular looking black and grey 1400 RPM 140mm and 1600 RPM 120mm PWM fans, which is why it comes in at a really affordable price. If you really want to go for it, there's also an RGB version of Grandis 3. It has a total of 6 6mm copper heat pipes and a copper base that embeds them on the bottom. The aforementioned EVO RGB version actually has that nickel plated, and it's only 5 euros more, so it really makes you want to reach for your pocket to take it and make it so, you never know, maybe your opinion about RGB changes eventually. All of these coolers can go on any of the ongoing major CPU platforms, except for the Threadripper, as it has a very specific socket layout. Since we touched this topic, what's cool about them in relation to AMD's AM4 platform is that you can reuse the original motherboard's backplate, so it makes the installation process that much easier with just a few screws and a mounting bracket. I was done with everything in less than 5 minutes. Speaking of AMD, as you'll now see I've used the Ryzen 7 3700X with 3 different clock and voltage configurations, with PBL being off, so let's just jump right into it without further ado, after all you're here for that and not for my blabbing. Since every motherboard manufacturer uses different fan speed configurations, I've ditched using the default fan speed profile of my X570 motherboard and instead used 3 different levels of fan speed for my testing, 30, 60 and 100%. I think this will give a pretty good look into what is each cooler and their fans capable at those kind of configurations. Anyhow, checking the temperature results, it was interesting to see how at low fan speeds, lower clocks and voltages, the difference in performance between coolers was most noticeable. For example, you can see how Mugen 5 turned out to be very capable of pulling ahead at the lower fan speeds, it seems that the big single tower design suits that type of scenario. That difference tapered off once you slowly bring up the fan speed, together with the clock and core voltage values. You can see how all three basically had identical 68 degrees Celsius temperature at 60% of fan speed and 4.1 GHz clock speed with 1.2 volts on the cores. 
All of them are really quiet up to 60% of fan speed and if you ask me that should be the top end because everything above that passes the point of diminishing returns. It just gets too loud for the amount of performance that you get in return. Although as you might have noticed at 60% of fan speed, Grandis 3 and Mugen 5 managed to keep the CPU working throughout the whole torture test at 4.25 GHz clock and 1.315 V core voltage, while with Fuma 2 it would crash. On the other hand, it turned out to be the quietest, topping off at only 40 dBA at full speed, even though it uses 1600 RPM fans as opposed to lower RPM fans on the other two models. Those two were much louder, and as I said, 60% of fan speed is a sweet spot for them in that regard, performance to noise ratio. Speaking of ratios, taking into consider their prices, around 45 to 50 euros, these are all pretty compelling products and you really need to get deep into it to see which one provides the best results. In this case that turned out to be Mugen 5, although it's also the loudest, granted not that much at 60% of fan speed, but still take that with a grain of salt. And yeah, I know that this particular RGB version of the Mugen 5 is a bit more expensive, but you can always get the regular Mugen 5 and buy a second fan if you really need it. It will end up being around 50 euros, although that second fan is not a big difference maker, especially if you have a back chassis exhaust fan to begin with. Lastly, it would be interesting to pin these coolers down against something more expensive from Noctua or Be Quiet. Definitely food for thought for a next comparison. That's it for this time from me. Thank you once again for watching. If you find this helpful, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up. That really helps a lot. And if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. And if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later, guys.